Welcome in everyone to Picks and Parlays Better's Edge. I'm Hannah Mears. That's Craig Trapp. That's Andrew Filipponi. We've got week 13 of the NFL, and we're going to start right now with the red hot Denver Broncos. Didn't think I'd get here at this point in the season. I know. Your team. This is my this was my team. Hannah's How the Bears or the team. Patriots were your team. Like this has been my team that's been my kryptonite at times. But they are a three and a half point underdog after seemingly finally catching some steam. They're headed to Houston, where the Texans finally looked like maybe they're taking a stumble here. So, Pony, what do you like about or dislike about the Denver Broncos in this spot? Yeah, let's see if week 13, some people that's a lucky number for, <laughs> other it's unlucky. Uh, I could use a little luck with these picks. I was kind of up and down last week. Uh, I'm having a hard time making sense of the line in this game, to be quite honest with you, because Denver's winning streak, go game by game and looked at who they've beaten. They have not done it against bad teams. It's really one of the more remarkable runs given where they were early in the season after the 70-yard or 70-point performance by the Dolphins against them. And then they lost to the Jets and Zach Wilson at home the following week to be where they are now. I really don't get it. Their defense has completely turned it around under Vance Joseph. Russell Wilson is not going to win the MVP or get an MVP vote, but uh, what a turnaround for him. He's smart with the football. He's efficient in the red zone. All three running backs for them pitching. And we saw Stroud, I thought, last week take sacks at the end of the Jags game, which took him uh, out of field goal range as it turned out. It was too long for their kicker. Man, I think this game is going to be super close, and I'm getting the hook. I love Denver, Craig. I really do, man. I do too. Craig, I'll, I'll tell you why at first before I go into that because a lot of what Pony said, but I'll go ahead and ride with the Broncos again this week. Broncos that, country. That three and a half number is perfect for me in this spot because the Broncos have won the last three. And when you look at Houston's last five games, they've either won the games or lost by that average of three or two and a half. So they've been a close margin by that field goal. And to your point, if their kicker can't make it, or maybe they're in that field goal range now, that three number is where the money is. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I think the Broncos know who they are now, and I'm going to keep riding with them. If anything, they can keep it close to a field goal. Are you on? Are you on the Broncos? Greg, what do you think? I, I wor- I, this sounds crazy, but I worry when numbers are three and a half because usually it's three and a half. They want you to take. They're begging you to take the underdog. Yep. And I like the underdog. I think Denver, like you said, I think they've beat in this run. They've beat some of the best teams in the league. And it really hasn't been close. I mean, they've really kind of dominated from start to finish. Uh, only a couple turnovers, and they would be, you know, like really good this year. Because remember, early in the year, they had a couple close losses. So to me, I think I still think you take the Denver Broncos here. Um, but I think it's going to need to be a defensive battle. So this is one of those games I might play a little parlay, play – you know, you play the underdog and the under um, here because I think that's how they have to win. I think if it gets high scoring and C.J. Stroud doesn't turn the ball over and they get this high-flowing offense like we saw against Cincinnati, I think it's going to be tough to beat. So I'm going to take the a parlay under and the Denver Broncos. And if we had to say which one was stronger, I would say the Denver Broncos plus the three and a half. The defense was going to be my next point to that was another reason why that three and a half number with the Broncos, they do have a strong defense, so Mm -hmm. you don't just have to rely on their offense to be perfect the entire game. A team that's looking to bounce back, the Detroit Lions, this is maybe a perfect bounce back spot for them against the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. The Saints are neck and neck right now with the Falcons to take the lead in the division, but Craig, can they do it? And will they do it at that four and a half spot over Detroit? I mean, you have the most winnable division in football, and the Saints still haven't been able to get it done. And the Lions are, you know, they got lucky, to be honest, to beat the Bears. Yeah. Um, the Pack, They caught a red-hot Packers team um, in a revenge spot. That was, you know, like a very tough spot for them. I think this is a good spot. They go on the road. I think that galvanizes teams when you go on the road when you're struggling a little bit. Um, the Saints just haven't been, you know, I, I just don't know. Derek Carr is just – Not what they expected, I don't think. Or maybe they expect it more. Um, I'm going to take the Lions in a bounce back spot at minus four and a half. I'm taking the Lions in that same spot as well. And the reason, you know, similar to what you were saying, and like I said, this is a really good bounce back spot for Detroit. The Saints could have a depleted receiver core as well. And I think that's why you look more toward Detroit. They could be more of the complete team in this one. Um, 
I think they're going to have a hard time scoring, keeping pace with a Detroit team that averages 26 points per game, and the Saints' defense is capable of giving up 20 or more. So I'm going to go ahead and ride with the Detroit Lions in this one as well at that four-and-a-half spot, Pony. Yeah, I think the line is indicative of what people thought the Lions were a few weeks ago. Um, I don't think if they were even riding high at this point, I don't think the line on the road at the Superdome would be like six or seven points. That would be too big. I think it's right where it would have been you know, had this game gotten played last week coming off the Bears win for Detroit. So that's why here I am questioning odds makers two (laughs) games in a row because what has Detroit done to be more than a field goal favorite on the road? Goff has not really been smart with the ball. He's turned it over uncharacteristically the last couple of games, and I just don't trust their defense right now I mean, the game they won at the chargers their last road game they gave up five scores to la on their last five possessions they were just fortunate enough where they scored on la every time to keep their lead so man i just don't trust them right now and i want to because it's a fun team to root for and you want to see detroit get over the hump after years of disappointing football but I, i think this is a line where people are keeping their fingers crossed they want to believe in detroit but they're not giving you a reason to do that right now so I will take the Saints there's definitely a strong argument to be made on both sides for those teams can you make a strong argument though for a commander's team on a three-game losing streak at home and the Dolphins are coming in pony yeah I think you can I really do I like Washington here Uh, the reason why I like them is because one of the things we've talked about as we've moved into the middle or later part of the season is teams make big changes They fire coaches or assistant coaches, and we see week in and week out that at least temporarily those teams benefit from that change. So what does Washington do? They fire their defensive coordinator after that Dallas loss on Thanksgiving. I think defensively they'll improve. We saw uh, the Raiders hold the Dolphins to 20 points a couple of weeks ago. So the line is so big. Yeah, I mean, Sam Howell's one of these erratic up-and-down quarterbacks. He could easily throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns in this game so i'll take them i'll I'll roll the dice with a big underdog here can you roll the dice with them uh i'm not touching the side in this game i think the total (laughs) is safer uh this is two offenses that really slinging around a lot and the defenses have been mixed results obviously last week not so mixed for washington it was um but i i just don't know i mean you traded some of your best defensive players at the trade deadlines i don't know what people were expecting here in washington I'm going to take the over here. I think that's a safer play. Yeah. Miami is setting on a big offensive performance, and I could see them put up 30 in this one, and then I could see I could see Washington put up 30. I mean, they do have the weapons if they can complete passes and avoid the turnovers. Now, their offensive line, not great. So that's the question here. Can they hold up? If they do, I think this is an easy over. I know it's high total, but a high total for a reason. Over 49 and a half, I believe I have it listed. Yeah, 49 and a half is where I was in a similar thought process of you, but I went and just sort of put all of my eggs in the Miami basket in this one in terms of points. And I'm going to say that their team total goes over 29 and a half. I think this is a 30 point. That is a high one. It's a high one. (laughs) But I had to find the stats to back this one up because (sighs) typically I wouldn't look at a team total maybe over 24 uh, in some cases. But 29 and a half, I think the Dolphins are going to score 30 points in this game. And here's why. In six of Miami's wins this year, they've done this. They've scored that 30 points. In six of the commander's eight losses this year, they've given up 30 points. In their last four losses, they've given up an average of 35 points. And these are to teams that aren't as explosive or have the explosive capabilities of the Miami Dolphins. Miami just put up 34 points on a Jets defense that's been suffocating teams this year. So I really do think they have what it takes. And like you said, if it comes down to it and it's a shootout, who's to say Miami can't put up 30 points? So I'm going to take the Dolphins team total in that one. Well, one of those touchdowns was a fail Mary. So let's see if we get that again. (laughs) You also have Washington played, I think, two games against the Giants, right? So Yeah, they lost both. That's like that's and DeVito one of the worst offenses. Three touchdowns. That's one of the worst him. offenses. So sometimes you imagine if they would have played, you know, too high. Power that's got to be the mm-hmm. highest road total I've seen in the NFL yeah, this year. That's that's twenty nine and a half. Absolutely, I'm still rest my case though <laughs> to all those points. Of I said thirty. Miami thirty, 30 points. He's got only go. get thirty points. Come on, they have the capability. Forty uh, Niners and Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles, a ten and one team right now, are a three point underdog at home. What does that say to you about this game, Craig? Rent spot. Remember, this was uh, the the game where all the quarterbacks went down, and they were, you know, playing the wildcat at the end of this game uh, to go to the Super Bowl last year for the Eagles. 
I think this is a perfect spot, and I do see some of these lines moving. I see a bunch of the different books already at two and a half because of Philly. Um, I mean, they've been unbelievable this year. They've won. This is the Minnesota Vikings of last year, where they won all those close games, and sometimes that can continue. But it is very difficult in NFL to have this kind of great record in one score games. I think this is the game. It means a lot more to San Francisco. Remember, San Francisco had that losing streak where they really don't have that margin for error because Seattle's right on their heels. I think this is a much bigger game for San Francisco, not just because, hey, they might have to beat this team later in the year, but they need to win their division so they get at least, uh, you know, play a game at home to start the playoffs. So I think San Francisco is the hungrier team. I think Philly, I won't say got lucky in a few of these games, but, but the Bills dominated that game. If the kicker makes, you know, the kick, Earlier in the game, they win this game or win that game. So to me, I think you take um, a more motivated team than San, Fr- and San Francisco. Here. I still like the Eagles at plus three in this spot. <laughs> I do. I know I feel like it's a trap and I'm walking right into yeah. it um, and I'm getting trapped. But the, the reason is the Niners defense is great, but the Chiefs and Cowboys have really good defenses too. And Philly still found a way to win. And now they're at home. They're a gritty team at home. And then you saw what they're capable of. I get everything about Josh Allen and the Bills, but they had them trapped in that game and Philly still gritted out a win. So I just think that even if they don't pull it out, they're going to keep it close. I think this is going to be one of the closer, more exciting games that we're going to see this week. And I just, I have too much confidence sometimes in in the Philadelphia Eagles, just somehow being that team that's scratching at everybody. Well, this is why, this is why the odds makers don't just look at the standings mm-hmm. because if they did, Philly would be at least a three point yep. favorite. If they look at the way these teams have played, I thought Craig made a very astute point that if you look at the way the Eagles have won these games, albeit against really good teams lately, they're trailing at halftime in every game. And they've come back and they've won their last four doing that against teams like the Chiefs and Bills. That's not sustainable. That's not a recipe for success. And I think right now, even though San Francisco suffered that three-game losing streak, I look at both teams. I still don't think Jalen Hurts is 100%. He made some huge throws in the Bills game. I don't like the way he's moving. I think that takes the RPO game out. I think they always they'll just hammer in on DeAndre Swift and make sure, hey, if Hurts wants to take off, let him yep. do it. I think that's a huge uh, point of emphasis in this game for San Francisco. And I do think if you look at both team schedules, if the Eagles lose this game, that's their second loss. They still have to go to Dallas. Yep. So if San Francisco wins, they win out. They'll have the tiebreaker. They could get the number one seed in home field advantage. So it is a gigantic game. I think this decides who has the number one seed, and I like the 49ers to go there and win as a two-and-a-half or three-point favorite. Fair enough. I just like the fact that it's in Philly, and Philly's an underdog. There's let's, something about that. Well, let's remember, two games back, guy drops the touchdown pass mm-hmm. for the Chiefs. The Bills are playing – they're a throwing team, let's be honest. In a monsoon, the guy misses a field goal. So it's like very easily in the NFL these things can be – can flip on on one play. On those two plays – I mean, Philly's nine and one. I mean, yeah, nine and one. Ten and one. Ten and one. So it's like that's how the NFL is won. You win these close games on these, you know, I won't say fluke plays, but you know, one guy drops a pass, all of a sudden coaches get fired. Uh, you know, it, teams miss the playoffs. Forty ers are healthy, and they yeah. got Chase Young now. They look like the best team in the NFL. Yeah, that, that was an unbelievable I'm comfortable trip. sitting in my spot still. Philly underdog <laughs> at home. I'm going to take it. If they weren't at home and they were still an underdog, I'd probably be able to switch sides. But there's just something about this Philly being an underdog right. mentality. Imagine to on the road. So I'm saying where that, I am. They're saying this would be six on the road. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. The Kansas City Chiefs at Green Bay. The Packers won two in a row after beating the Lions last week on Thanksgiving. They're now a six and a half point underdog at home against the Kansas City Chiefs team who's played seemingly in a lot of closer games than expected, I think, at this point this year. So, Pony, do you like the Packers in this one? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take the six and a half points. I don't think it's a bad bet to take Green Bay to win outright with the, with the way that Jordan Love has performed. I think the last four games, it's eight touchdowns to two interceptions. Two of those came against the Steelers. So really, in three of his last four games, he hasn't turned the ball over. And it's not like they're playing conservative offense. He's let it rip downfield. We've seen these young receivers. They've got the youngest offense in the NFL. These guys have gotten better, whether it's Reed, Wicks, Watson, uh, you name it for them, uh, Dobbs. Looks like Aaron Jones could come back and play. That gives them another weapon. Their tight end is even. Musgrave has made a stride, so... Yeah, I mean, Kansas City, we've seen it. They have, like they did against the Raiders, bad first 30 minutes, great second half, trying to find a 60-minute game from them. They haven't done it. The weeks before, it was good first half, no points in the second half. 
They roll, they play the game like that in Green Bay. I think they're going to lose outright with the way the Packers are playing. I think it's – go look it up on your sports book. I think Green Bay to rally to make the playoffs is a very good bet right now with how that seventh seed in the NFC is shaping up. So are you taking the money line or do you like them at the six I'm going to take better? six and a half. I'm going to tell you guys to sprinkle the money line in though. Yeah, six and a half is where where I like with the Packers as well. The Chiefs have had a top five defense, but the offense really hasn't been the superior part in mm-hmm. all of this. So the Packers – with some momentum finally, especially, I would say, defensively, I just think this could be a game that relies a, a bit more on the run. It could be slower, and that could end up being in the favor of the Packers at home. I'm going to have to take them at six and a half spot at home. I like Green Bay in this matchup. Yeah, Kansas City is, I mean, talking about a team that has lived in these close games. I mean, they probably should have lost the, the game across uh, with Miami, you know, like late that Miami really should have beat them and came back and won that game. And then what would this – you'd think of this this team. Um, turnovers has really hurt them. They yep. are a team that don't usually turn the ball over. That's how they lost to the Eagles. I mean, they had two in the red zone or right at the red zone that would have won the game if they just got one of them. So, to me, um, I think you play the hotter team. That's the Packers. And the Packers not only should make the playoffs – I think are going to make the playoffs because if you look at their schedule ahead, I think, you know, and that's a very, you know, the NFC is so much easier to get into. I think they're, I, they're a team that's coming ripe in the in the right time of the year, and I like the Packers here. I would buy the half a point to play it at seven because, you know, you never know. Sure. Mm-hmm. You're up late, mm-hmm. and then, you know, Patrick Mahomes pulls a, a, you know, touchdown, and you, you know, field goal on, a, you know, go for it on fourth down or something, give a field goal. So to me, Buy the half a point, take them at seven. Yeah, I think that's going to be my best bet of the week. Packers plus six and a half. I think that's a fun bet to make, Man. but I also, I do, I really think that was that was going to be one of my best bets. I've looked at the Lions in this spot, and I was like, I really feel good about Green Bay, and at least for just one more game. I don't know if it's sustainable, but I think they have the Chiefs in the perfect spot being at home in Green Bay for this one in that six and a half. Do you guys have a best bet of the week from the games we've talked about or one that you want to look at ahead of this? Well, I like one of the ones we talked about. I'm 16 and three, my best bets the last three weeks. I've Darn. been on fire, 68 percent on overall bets for NFL season, best NFL season I've ever had. Usually, it's about 62 to 63 percent. So that has um, been on a great run. I like two best bets this week. One of them in the game we talked about. I like the over 49 and a half in that Washington Miami game. I think both teams score 26 to 27 plus. I think that's going to be an absolute shootout. I could see even maybe even both teams getting 30. So I'm going to take the over in that one. I do have another best bet, so make sure you check it out at the uh, app. Pony. I didn't know I was sitting next to Mr. Sixty Eight Percent over yeah, here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't Holy usually talk cow. about it. Fact check that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> usually when I talk about it, that's when. It, so I haven't mentioned it. Lately. Billy Waters over here. Yeah, my man. Um, I'm going to go against our hometown team, Hannah. I think five and a half with Arizona is a good bet in this game. The Steelers. We want to talk about one position, one possession games. Yeah. That's all they do. <laughs> Uh, I think Arizona, in terms of what they bring to the table, defensively they were a complete mess last week against the Rams. They've got a defensive coach. I think he tears into them. James Conner's coming back to Pittsburgh, so in that way you know, they're going to try to win one for him as a guy that's really had a bounce-back year when he's played over five yards per carry. There's always a threat with Kyler that he can make things interesting. They almost went to Houston and won a couple of weeks ago with him at the helm, even though last week was an outlier. I think they're a better team with him. And I want to buy into the Steelers, but this is a game where I think they let the inferior team hang around and play down to their competition. They'll probably win late. But since when do we lay six, five and a half, six points? With the with Steelers? Them? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Not with the way their offense has been. And I get everything they were just able to do. But It's either a stay away a or you better game. Arizona. Right. Yeah. And Arizona's done this to teams early in the season. We've seen that. So, yeah, I do agree. There's a lot of emotion in this one as well that could play a factor. This is Picks and Parlays Better's Edge Week 13. For more, make sure you download that new Picks and Parlays app.